everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Today we conclude our mini-series on how to pass parameters to a program either in assembler, we had two installments in that little series, and then we looked at COBOL in the previous video, and today we look at PL1, my favorite language on the mainframe, together with assembler, they're, they're equally important to me. COBOL, as you may know, I know very little about, Fortran I know something about but uh, PL1 and uh, assembler is where I feel at home especially PL1 I did a lot of professional PLO programming uh, back in the days so uh, today we'll look at PL1 as we just said PL1 main procedure parameter passing considerations so of course we're talking about how to pass parameters to the main procedure when the program enters uh, passing between functions is well understood in PL1 as well as uh, calling uh, other PL programs or uh, that are linked together or of course um, passing uh, uh, parameters to a thread. As you know PL1 has two libraries. One is the uh, standard transient library which is the one for non-multitasking and then there is another uh, library, PL1 library, that is for multitasking. Multitasking was always treated somewhat uh, special in PL1. Uh, there were a lot of transaction monitors uh, that would not allow multi-threading in PL1. I think uh, early Kix versions did not allow multi to use the multi-threading library in PL1, and uh, certainly other uh, transaction monitors uh, also did not allow it. So today we'll uh, start programming here. I have here a skeleton of a PL1 uh, compile link a Go JCL. I think we just have to uh, here we just invoke the compiler. Uh, using uh, this library here and of course the uh, runtime library is the one that we just mentioned here uh, PL1 base that's the base transient library and we're not going to use the multi-threading because I'm not going to do multi-threading this program but I've been thinking about making an, a video about how do you do how to do uh, multi-threading in PL1 on MVS so let's get started we just want to invoke uh, a program a PL1 program that we compile link um, and we just say uh, something like uh, Moshix. Uh, so we put in here the slash to uh, to pass a parameter, and then this is going to be the parameter we pass to the program. So every uh, the PL1 is going to go in here. Um, let's just, as you know, the first column has to be. Uh, empty for PL1. Um, that is, uh, I guess, at this point, not a surprise anymore. And then uh, we just say arm. I just call it test uh, prog arm. So this is the procedure arm options main reorder. And so this way, oops, there is a already the first speller here. Um, I actually don't like to be in insert mode so much in ISPF or uh, Revit in, in uh, Greg Price's editor. I prefer to make, to create some space um, and then uh, write the stuff in there. So let's just do something like this. Declare parm character, let's make it up to 100 and then var variable so one thing to know about how variable length uh, variables are called in pl1 so uh, strings that can be of variable length which you can have in pl1 is that the first two bytes of the variable itself when it's stored in memory is the counter for the length of the variable right so maybe we can put it here and say storage allocated for varying strings is two bytes longer uh, than the declared length. Leftmost two bytes hold the current length. So the compiler uh, 
what it does is it uses when you allocate 100 it actually only makes 98 variable for uh, available for payload the leftmost two bytes uh, keep the current length of the variable in memory so the so this is how the compiler and the library manage it at runtime um, because how would you otherwise how would how would the runtime otherwise know at runtime how long the string is currently uh, yeah you could allocate the fixed uh, the fixed amount of memory and and that's it um, but uh, this is not how things were done in the mainframe back then you only use the memory that you really need it uh, because everything is efficient on the mainframe unless other operating system <coughs> such as Windows anyway so let's um, allocate a variable here fixed bin something like that and then now we know that the length of the variable is going to be we use here a built-in uh, function of the PL1 runtime by a, a library string arm and I guess we need one more okay so now L will hold the length of the variable uh, oh sorry of the parameters that were passed to us and now we just uh, put it uh, for the benefit of the test here pit put skip list L uh, which should contain the length of this um, parameter so we know what is the length and then put skip list parameter itself and then we say end test okay so this is as simple a program as I can imagine to uh, output the variable the parameter that is being passed to our program so we have uh, we declare an entry procedure here called test and that's also going to be the name of the C list in the assembler program, of course. And then uh, procedure with uh, with parameter called parm, options main, uh, and then reorder, and then declare parm character 100 varying. Um, and then we say declare L, that's the counter, or whatever we want to call it, fixed uh, bin or bin fixed. Or some people prefer to write binary fixed. I I write kind of both fixed binary 15 we don't need more we could also write 31 um, L is equal to the length of the string parameter and then put skip list the length put skip list parameter and exit and here we write in Moshix uh, actually we don't need a sysin for this program okay so that's as simple as I can imagine so Let's just execute this and let's see what comes out. Job 960. Oh, condition code 00, zero start 3.8. Okay, let's see what happened here. So the compilation went without errors. That's already good. Linkage editor, no errors, and execution, no errors. But that part I kind of knew because. Um, I mean, what's, what can go wrong in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of PL1? All right, so um, let's see what came out here. Okay, so the length is here, six, and the payload is here. Moshex authorization code, of course, is zero. Um, so this went well. Let's test with another case let's just put in M and let's see what happens if we do it this way it's kind of a you know back in the days 35 40 years ago it would have been considered a huge waste to each time compile the same program again linkage edit and then go just for changing the parameter because the program of course is not going to change so uh, in back in the days I'm talking like you know mid 80s or so if I would have written a program and then uh, to test it with different payloads run it the exact same program again and again uh, somebody would have been knocking on my head that's for sure uh, today uh, that's just the way people do things I feel a little bit bad about showing you this kind of behavior don't do that um, okay let me just but I am uh, processing power is cheap these days 
and ample. Okay, here it is. So one and m, perfect. So um, this is how this works. And uh, and once you take the payload, then of course all the uh, application logic would then happen what to do with the payload so you could pass it a command say you know run once or something like that right or then you know what different kind of this is application logic but that's what I'm saying it doesn't you, you need to know what to do with the kind of parameter that be being, being passed um, and but this is how we would do this in uh, PL1 very very simple I think of all the languages we looked at this is probably the simplest way to uh, to deal with parameters in PL1. We could maybe also look at RPG if there's any takers for that. Um, I think I would, could get this to work. I'm not I'm not very, I mean, I know almost nothing about RPG, but it is a very interesting language. It runs also on the um, OS 400 on the, on the mid-level machines by IBM. So uh, interesting stuff with RPG as well. But this is PL1. If you have any questions, please drop um, comments or question in the you know below this video if you like this particular video please press on the thumbs uh, up button and don't forget to subscribe thank you very much goodbye